Welcome back to our IBM MQ video series with Spring Boot. In this video, we are going to follow up from our theoretical distributed system and complete the sending and receiving of messages with MQ in the middle. As you can see from our previous diagram, we have system 1 sending messages on the request queue, which we accomplished in the previous tutorial. This time we thought of being a bit clearer and renamed those boxes that are called System 1 and System 2 to Order Service and Payment Service. So the goal is for Order Service to place an order on the Order Request Queue and for Payment Service to accept the order and put a message on the Order Response Queue to confirm the purchase. So let's get started. First of all we need to create the Payment Service. This is going to be very simple. We are using Spring Initializer to create a new Spring Boot project called Payment Service and we will also add the dependencies we need, Spring Web and Lombok. We can verify the POMXML should look correct by clicking Explore. That looks fine. So we cannot import IBM dependencies, I guess because it's proprietary software or some legal reasons like that. But don't worry as we can add it manually later. So we import the project into our ID and add the dependencies there. And the first thing we need to do is to add the Attach Enable JMS uh, annotation to discover the JMS listeners. Then we can create our payment service. In here we just uh, add the annotation at JMS listener with the queue name we want to listen to. In this case we are listening to the order request queue. The method accepts a JMS message and throws JMS exception. So we cast our JMS message to a text message and we print the content of the message to a logger so we can verify it later. Then we just add, added some random logic to provide the response. This is just a silly example but imagine the payment service returning payment ok or payment failed as a response and we say the payment OK should be the response 80% of the time. Finally we send the response to the order response. For this we just use the JMS template convert and send method just like we have done before. We also make sure we reuse the correlation ID from the request message so we can identify responses. Great! We just need to build our project now. So before we forget, we bring the same properties in the application.property. So we need to add now the server port configuration so that the two Spring Boot application can run on different ports without clashing. I'll skim over the Docker configuration. You can just grab uh, that configuration file from the link in the GitHub repository in the video description below. For now, all you need to know is that we build a jar with Maven and we build our custom image with the name Payment Service Local. Let's reopen the Order Service repository. If you have not got it locally, don't worry as I will also link this to the video description below. Now, if you remember, the Order Service application already has the AdJMS listener annotation, so we can just proceed and create a listener for the order response. We create the order response class and annotate it with add component annotation. Then we create our receive method and annotate it with AdJMS listener pointing at the order response queue. So from here is, is nothing new really. We cast the JMS message to a text message and log some information. Finally, we omit the business logic, but here typically you could check for matching records in your database and update them accordingly. For example, if you stored your orders in a SQL database with a pending status, you could retrieve the order by correlation ID, assuming it is a unique value, 
you could update the order to a completed status or failed status depending on the response you get back from the payment service. Now we actually try out if it works. Again, we are going to skim over the Docker configuration, but we have made some modification in the Docker Compose file, which may help summarize what we are trying to do. We find Docker Compose, when used correctly, to be incredibly helpful to understand the architecture and dependencies of a project. Here we can see we have three components in this project, the order service, the MQ server and the payment service. The order service is obviously our local project. In fact, you can see it references the local build with which points at our Docker file. This runs on port 8080 and also needs to connect to the MQ server. We achieve the connection by overriding the environment variable with the new connection URL MQ server 1414, as this is the name of the container in this Docker file which is understood and um, Docker will know how to connect to. Then NQ server, we already had a look at that in the previous video, so there is nothing new to add. If you want to check out the video, we will leave a link to it here. Finally, the payment service is the other Spring Boot app, which references an image name which we given before. Um, and the port is 1990, as we said, because we don't want to clash with port 8080. And the connection is the same uh, MQ server connection, as we explained before. The step to build this project are the following. Maven clean package. Docker compose build. And then we can run it with docker compose app. Now let's go back to Postman. If you remember, we had this post request to submit orders with the JSON body. We can just send any message with the new order identifier and submit. Now let's take a closer look at the logs. Docker Compose puts all the logs into one console, so it's actually easier for us to check. Number one, the order service sent the message with the order 678. Number two, the payment service received the order 678 and processed it. Number three, payment service sending a response. And number four, order service received the response with message payment OK and correlation and G ID just as expected. This is great. So it all worked at the end and the full round trip of messages. So we hope the Docker instructions were not too confusing. If there is anything missing, Please check the GitHub repositories for references. We should have the instructions in the README files or just let us know in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching and see you next time.